my notes. Oops. All right, here we go. Welcome, everybody, YouTube, Ephraimites. This is uh, Jared with another Austin Fellowship meeting. Um, this is the Cradle of Hope Ministries, and obviously this is under Prophet Tom Deckard. Go get uh, that CD on my desk. Okay. It's on the left-hand side. <laughs> and so what we're going to do today is we're going to take pause on the purpose and temptation that we've been going over for the last month or so, and there's a reason why. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about discord and judgment and also gossip, which is the same thing, which is what most people know it by. And so I got Monique bringing me the CD. Donna has a, a teaching called Discord. Very, very important. Um, same thing as gossip, same thing as judgment. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to, So I, basically what I've done is I, I've taken all this, the scriptures and the lesson that Donna gave and just added maybe a, a scripture that Prophet has taught on with judgment as well because this is one of the most important things that we as a congregation and we as a body of Christ have to learn that what we speak about other people has an effect on our lives, has an effect on um, the blessings that we want to have but aren't able to have, on um, effect on defiling our ministries. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So turn to Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to kind of get into some definitions of what um, discord, what judgment is, what gossip is. And we're going to look at it through the lens of the Word of God and how we are to stay away from this. So Matthew chapter 7. Okay, we are taught that we're not supposed to be in defilement. Prophet went through a whole series about defilement, <clears throat> and what we're going to show today is that gossip, judgment, judging other people, discording about it, is is a way that you can do that. A very easy way to do that, and we all fall into that every day. And as I always, always want to say, when I go into these lessons, <clears throat> I don't even have a lot of notes today. I literally have a, a set of scriptures I'm gonna read through, and we'll just see where the meeting goes. But I, I always want to tell people I'm not picking, pinpointing any person out. The way these lessons, the way Prophet teaches this stuff, the way Donna teaches this stuff, is it hits home with all of us individually. So I'll try to give examples of my own life because I'm always cautious. I don't want people to think, oh, I'm talking about y'all. I'm talking about myself and stuff that me and Monique have gone through. All right. So Matthew chapter 7, you should be in verse 1, and I'll go through 5. All right. Judge not that ye be not judged. This is Jesus talking. Don't judge other people, and you know, unless you'll be judged yourself. For with the judgment that you judge, you shall be judged. And with the measure that you meet, it shall be measured unto again. So what the Lord is saying is when you, let me back up, let me back up a couple steps because I forgot to say this. The reason why we're going into this is last week when I was teaching on purpose and temptation, there were three areas that we talked about that the Lord was going to allow us to be tested in. That was sexual immorality, that was pride, and it was Greed, love of money. Pride is what we're getting into, right? When you're going to pass judgment, when you're going to gossip about someone else, that sin of pride has to rise up in you because what you have to first do to, to judge somebody else is to elevate yourself above them in your eyes, in that area, all right? So whether it be you talking about how they raise their kids or how, they, how their marriage is operating, you have to elevate yourself with pride above them in that area and judge and tell other people about what they're doing is wrong. So we're talking about pride here. So when Jesus says that when you judge other people, you're going to be judged in the same measure or the same magnitude that you judge them. And last week we also mentioned, you know, that's not just when you get to heaven, the Lord's going to judge you about what the things that you did on this earth. That's going to happen. But right here and now, when you gossip, when you sow discord, and when you judge other people, that's going to fall right back on you. Where I'm from, a little city called Lake Jackson, we have, I think it's the Mosquito Festival for the whole state of Texas, right? No, I don't know. We have a Mosquito Festival where I'm from, Lake Jackson, or Clute. Um, my mom had to correct me on that, but I think it's for the whole state. I don't think anybody else has a Mosquito Festival in Texas. Basically, we grew up with a bunch of mosquitoes. Um, I mean, even when I played football in seventh grade, I actually counted 100 mosquito bites on my legs. That's how much mosquitoes we have. The reason why I'm saying that is, you know, off is a very hot commodity around you know springtime summertime of the year and so when you spray on off or when you put on any type of lotion you rub that all over your body right you lather yourself up and what I want to do is when I talk about this I want you to look at discord and judgment as repellent of blessing that you're putting on yourself so when you put that mosquito repellent on those mosquitoes are supposed to I mean you've got these these super mosquitoes that bite right through it but it's supposed to repel the mosquitoes from biting you when you judge, when you sow discord, you're defiling your own self. 
you're keeping the blessings from God from coming to you, just like rubbing mosquito repellent all over your body. All right, that's why that's the visual I want you to have as we go through this. Verse three: And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Don't look at the little speck, the little toothpick that's in their eye. Focus on that telephone pole that's in your own eye. Verse four. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull the mote out of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite, Jared translation, dummy, first cast the beam out of thy own eye, and thou shalt see clearly so that you can take the mote out of your brother's eye. Judgment, again, is you professing your sin of pride within you because you know what's best for somebody else's situation. All right? We're going to go through some scriptures about that. Proverbs 6. I want you all to write these down. Proverbs 6. All right, so that's judgment. You professing what you believe is right or wrong in somebody else's life. And we have a culture of that here in the United States, in the body of Christ here in the United States. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Proverbs 6, 12. Okay, now we're going to get over into discord. And how the Lord views this. This is not my opinion. This is scriptural. Proverbs 6.12 says, A naughty person, a wicked man or woman, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teaches with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. Pride. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. So the Lord is saying a wicked man sows discord. Gossips. That's wickedness. I'm not making this up, all right? So we all think it's, you know, it's it, it, it's so common here. We want to get on the phone. We want to get on social media, and we want to talk about what somebody else is doing is wrong. What we think what they're doing is stupid. I want to break this up into two arenas, all right, because in the body of Christ, everybody knows it's not supposed to be this way, but we act one way when we're around church folk, and we act another way when we're at home. I act the same way. Um, a lot of people, it rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but I am who I am. But I'm going to try to break this up in this lesson where, when we get around church folk, we want to judge other denominations. When we talk about the uh, transition of the church, you got Baptist, you got Methodist, you got Pentecostal, you got all these different denominations. And you know, and I know this from my own experience. Even with this Cradle of Hope ministry that we're in, we always want to point the finger and judge others about what they're doing is wrong in our eyes as it pertains to the Word of God. That gets into that area of pride. We have to be aware of that. Okay, just because. Just because somebody else, and I need to say this, is not keeping the commandments of God, Sabbath, new moon, the things that we teach, we are not to judge them just like they are not to judge us. All right? And I'm a, I'll probably bring that back up, but I, I want to put that theme in there as well. So in, in the area of religion or spirituality or how you want to look at it, scriptural stuff, you can't judge another person based on what you believe they're doing is wrong and what you believe you're doing is right. And also in commonplace, when you're talking about work, you're talking about school or just areas outside of church or synagogue or whatever it is that you attend, you're not to be judging people. You can't do that because it's defilement. We just read right there that it's wickedness. Judgment, gossip, same thing. It's wickedness. Verse 15, therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. All right, this wicked person that sows discord, his calamity, the problems that are going to come in his life are going to come suddenly, and suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. These six things the Lord hates, yea, the seventh one is an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, all right, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, the heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to running into mischief, and a false, wicked, false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. So all those things the Lord hates. But he said the seventh is a what? An abomination. So a wicked man soweth discord, and now we see that you gossiping about somebody else is also an abomination unto God. That's strong, very strong. When we talk about Halloween, we talk about how all that witchcraft and all that stuff that goes on is an abomination unto the Father. And yet the Lord puts gossip in that same category. We don't think of it like that, but that's where the Lord is, is, is showing us through his word of how he, how he looks at gossip. Something as simple as you spreading rumors about somebody else. I'm gonna show you what that does. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say that. So on YouTube, I get 10 to 15 comments a day from people all across the world, 
and 99% of that is judgment. Talking about false prophet this, this guy is an idiot, uh, what y'all teach is fallacy, y'all are leading people. I get all that stuff every single day. None of it sees the light of day because I delete it, but I see it. All right. And the problem is, they'll say things like, you know, go read, go Google Prophet Deccan online and read all that stuff. The problem is, this is what discord and gossip and judgment does. You don't know that person's situation. Just like you're looking at me on this camera, you see I have this dressed red shirt on. You could infer that I'm dressed nicely. I got on some nice square toe shoes. I got some nice slacks on because you try, you're trying to extrapolate the rest of the story about what does little that you see. So I'll go ahead and study. Monique is shaking her head at me, but I'm going to go ahead and show y'all. I got on some Jordan shorts, some basketball shorts, and some Puma socks with a dress shirt. Reason why I'm showing y'all that is because you don't know the rest of the story, but yet you try to look at what you can see and then project what you believe is right or wrong based off what you can see. All right. Discord and judgment sows a seed into the hearts of you and the people that listen. And that seed is going to take root. So people that don't know anything about Prophet Decker, people that don't know anything about you and I are going to have this, this notion or have this preconceived notion about who you are as a person based on the discord and judgment that somebody else said about you, whether it be right or wrong. That's an abomination unto God. That causes division in the body of Christ, and we're going to see that as we go forward. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay? Seed is very important. We always want to talk about seed time and harvest as it only pertains to the giving of monies and receiving back of that multiplied. Yes, there's some truth in that, um, but also seed words are seeds. Actually, the scripture says the sower soweth the word. So words are seeds. When you speak about somebody else, when you're passing judgment about somebody else to a group of people or to another person, you're planting seeds in their heart, and that's going to take root. All right? And so when we go to the quarterlies, yeah, you guys are turning there. I'm going to say this too. When, you, when we go to the quarterlies, we are very, very guarded about that. Because somebody could be receiving, you guys on this call have all been taught about tithes, offerings, about Sabbath. You guys know within yourself that this is truth. Those that have actually participated in some of these festivals and Sabbath and New Moon, you've seen those blessings in your life, correct? But when you get around other people and they start passing judgment on you about what you're doing, that seed, if you don't rip it out, is going to take root in you and it's going to cause you to doubt. Even though you have experience with God knowing God has blessed me for doing these things. If you're not careful, family, friends, people at work can sow that judgment into your heart, and that's going to take root, and it's going to cause you to take some steps back in the progress that you've made. That's why it's an abomination. All right? It's spiritual. You're not slapping a person in the face physically. You're not fighting physically like we see people do on, on Internet and stuff all the time, but your words are doing just that in the spirit, slapping people in the face pushing them down, stabbing people in the back. All those can be done with our words through gossip, through judgment, through discord. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, go to verse 25. 1 Corinthians 12, 25. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. All right? No schism. What does schism mean? I'm going to give you a definition of that. A schism is a split or a division between strongly opposed sections or parties caused by the difference of opinion or belief. So just like I gave you that example of he's a Baptist, he's a seven-day Adventist, I'm, you know, I'm in Cradle of Hope, we're, we're Ephraimites, we're you know, Messianic Jews, whatever, whatever you name you want to call yourself, a schism is going to come whenever you have a strong disbelief with somebody else and you're professing that, all right, and that starts to divide people. We have to be aware of that. You can't do that. Even us, with you know, I'm always careful of that because I don't want to judge somebody else. I remember a story Prophet told some years back about um, a ministry that he was in, and they were bringing. I think he he went into another church, and the church wasn't into lifting, praising God with hands and with worship and with music. They were a very conserved group of people, still Christians, still saved. But what he started to do is he went in there. And he tried to bring in the song, bring in the worship, try to get people to clap their hands and lift up their hands and stuff. And, you know, what happened was it started to push people away. People started to leave. The numbers went down. And the Lord told them, don't steal from them the only piece of Christ that they have. 
Just because somebody doesn't believe the way you believe doesn't mean that they don't have Christ in their hearts. And with you judging that person and with you sowing that seed of abomination in, in them, it's going to cause them to fall back or fall away from the Lord. That blood is on your hands. Okay? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to paint this picture of you're not physically beating people. You're not physically pushing people down. You're not physically, you know, doing these things to the people. But when you speak these words, it, just, it has more effect than it is if you would have just punched them right in the chest or stabbed them in the back because those wounds are healed. But those seeds are staying in somebody's heart for years and years. Many people with depression, many people with problems in their adulthood can all be traced back to a father or a mother or a family member that talked down to them when they were kids through, the, through those seeds of discord and judgment. That's how powerful that is. That's why it's an abomination. That's why God calls it wickedness. We have to all be aware of that. Go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. No schism. No division within the body of Christ. Even within the group that we have of Cradle of Hope, when we go to the quarterlies, you know, if you start talking about stuff like, hey, man, Donna doesn't like me. Prophet doesn't like me. You know, Prophet such and such didn't say hi to me. He, does, he must not like me. You, you sowing those, those seeds of schism in, within the body of Christ causes division. Can't do that. Can't do that. It's blocking your own blessings. James chapter 4, verse 1. James chapter 4, verse 1. <laughs> Are you trying to find it? I'm going to go ahead and read it. Yeah. It says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your own lust that war in your members? Discord, gossip, and feuds come from our own lust and our own pride within ourselves. Like I described to you before, in order for you to point the finger at somebody else and say what they're doing is wrong, in their family and their relationships and how to use their money and whatever it is, you have to first do what? Elevate yourself in your own mind over them in that area so that you can, like we all have that, that saying, you look down or turn your nose up. You have to look down on somebody. Yeah, you're looking down on them because you've already elevated yourself with pride within your own mind and you're talking down to them in that area. All right, now I'm going to get to a scripture here at the end that's going to really show you why you can't do that. You can't even get close to doing that. All right. The sin of pride, again, makes us express our own opinions. It makes us judge other people, whether that be right or wrong. And in the body of Christ, there's, I mean, I, I used to be taught when early on that we have a right to judge other people by the word. Okay. You, I mean, you can do that, but understand what Jesus said. That judgment that you put on them is going to be poured back on your own head with the same measure. So, yeah, you're talking about, and I love this, you know, I use this example because, you know, I've done it in the past. I know everybody's done it at some point. When we're all teenagers, when we're young adults before we're married, most of us get into some sort of fornication. Everybody shake your heads, yes, yes. But when we get married, we always want to turn back around and we want to judge other people that aren't married that are doing fornication. Covering the fact that we did it when we were coming up, but now we want to elevate ourselves and judge other people about those things. All right. I'm going to get to I brought that up for a reason because there's a scripture I'm going to get to to show you that God puts fornication and judgment and discord in the same category. All right. Proverbs chapter 10. Did I already read James 4? Yeah, I did. Go to Proverbs 10. Let me speed up. Yeah. Proverbs 10, 19. It says, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. This is hard for some people than it is for others. Harder for some people than it is for others. Harder for women than it is for men most of the times. The more you talk about any person, about anything, go make sure his door is closed. The more you talk, the greater the chance it is for you to get into defilement by judging someone, discord, and gossiping. The more you talk. That's why a prophet would always tell you know people, get off of the telephones. That's why in this ministry, you're we don't allow people, let's say if I'm in Texas and we have a fellowship here, the fellowship members here don't need to be calling people in New York, don't need to be calling people in California. I'm just throwing states out there, Michigan or whatever, because that opens the door for judgment, discord, and gossip. It opens the door for that. For instance, you know, my fellowship, my fellowship leader did this. What does yours do? Oh, he didn't do that? Oh, he doesn't do that for y'all? He doesn't say that? 
or y'all, you know, that opens the door up for gossip and for discord, and that gets into that defilement area. That's why we just say, hey, you know, no phone calls. Just no. I mean, it, it sounds harsh. It sounds like it sounds controlling, but it's for your benefit because most people coming in and it is doesn't understand the magnitude of what discord and judgment does in defiling yourself, defiling your family. You're just thinking you want a fellowship and have a prayer line, but all you're going to do is open that door up for gossip, for judgment, for discord. We in the rules we have, you know, after a meeting is over, after the teaching is done, please go up to the fellowship leader and ask the questions in private. The reason why we say that again is because, like I told you, I get a bunch of uh, biblical donkeys that send me stuff on YouTube judging what the material said and how what we're saying is wrong, and they give me all this, these, these long teachings and scriptures that they put in these comments. I just delete that crap. I don't read it. What that does is somebody else could have received that, and they're good with that thing. It's sewn into their heart that that word is going to you know, produce some 30, 60, 100 fold down the line. They're going to mature. But when somebody else comes up and says why they believe that is wrong and how a prophet this and prophet that and back in my church we do this, now you've just messed up that seed. You've thrown some, some gravel in there in that ground that they had, and that's going to mess up the word that they got. That's why we say come individually to the fellowship leader and ask the questions. All right, We're very guarded about words that are sown into people's hearts. We want that to be the word of God. We want that to be the way... The material like prophets brought forth, we don't need that other crap of what you believe and the visions and dreams that you have put in there with that, because that's gonna that's gonna harm people. That's gonna stop their growth. Mark chapter nine. Oh, sorry, stay in Proverbs ten. I got one more scripture. Sorry. Proverbs ten, I'm gonna read the next one, verse twenty. Proverbs ten twenty. It says, The tongue of the just is as is as choice silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. All right, the tongue of the just, the tongue of the righteous. All right, we have to be as if choice silver. We have to watch what we say. You have to be conscious of what you say. Go to Mark 9. Ladies, men, when we're on the phone and somebody else comes up in the conversation, you have to be conscious enough to stop yourself and stop that situation. Okay, my wife, this happened yesterday. She was talking to a neighbor. Just standing there having cordial conversation, yeah, you know, just talking about how we what stuff going on in our life, stuff's going on in their life, and then comes the judgment. Starts opening their mouth about such and such, two houses down, stuff that's going on in their marriage and with their kids. This is what I think about it. I think that's a bad parenting job. I think this. I think that. And my wife's just sitting here listening to it. Now, you guys know my wife. She's very nice, very sweet person. She doesn't have the heart to say no. Nope, that's, that's discord. I don't want to hear that and walk off. I would do something like that. Huh? what you say? Oh, yeah. Well, she's My wife's talking to her. I don't know if you can hear her. But she was talking to the neighbor, all this discord and judgment going on, and she's trying to change the subject. Like, oh, man, it's, it's ants in the ground. Oh, man, oh, y'all got this new tree plant. They're trying to change the subject. But obviously they wasn't having it. So the reason why I say that is, you know, she was a partaker of that lady's sin. All right, that's the part where we have to. I, I need to bring that in. There's a service out here. What's the name of that car service where people pick where people pick people up? There's a service out here called Lyft, where you can have your own car, and you know you you're paid by this company to go and pick up people that need a lift. I think it's like some app that you download or something like. That. It's not a phone no, number you call. You, no, the customer just pays you. You're basically a taxi. Yeah, but how do you contact them? You app? App. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have an app on your phone. You say, hey, man, I don't have a car. I need somebody to take me downtown Austin, whatever. It's where we stay in Austin area. And somebody, you know, through that app comes, picks you up, you pay them, and that's a nice little thing. The reason why I say that is if, you just, if somebody to picks you up to take you somewhere and you stop and you go rob a bank and get back in the car and y'all get pulled over, who gets in trouble? Both of y'all because you're good to by association. So the same way, when you're on the phone, you're talking to neighbors across the street, you're in the, you know, at work, that's, that was my problem. You're at work and all this gossiping is going on, you are a partaker of that person's sin, whether you want to be that or not. That's the way it is. You're a partaker of that defilement. So you're going to have to learn how to be, no, I mean, you're going to, you're going to have to be sometimes viewed as a biblical donkey, if you know what I'm saying in those situations. 
because some people just don't get a clue. All right, judgment and defilement is what we've read. Wickedness, it's defilement, it's an abomination. We have to stay away from that stuff. So I'm bringing that up because I know we all got you know places of work that we got to go and deal with people at. We got neighbors we got to deal with. We got family members that call us on the phone. You guys have to be conscious of when they start opening their mouth up about somebody else. Here it comes, rubbing that that blessing repellent right on your body, all over. Just rubbing it all over when you're listening and when you're talking and you're judging that person that's on that discord about them and gossiping. God ain't gonna bless that. He can't because it's an abomination, it's wickedness, and it's defilement. Romans 14. Did I read into Mark 9? No. No, I did. Sorry. Mark 9, 50. Keep me honest on that. Mark 9, chapter uh, chapter 9, verse 50. Mark chapter 9, verse 50. Y'all should be there. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness, wherewith shall you season? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. So, and if you're going to have peace with one with another, you can't be gossiping, can't be sowing discord. And if you get into that, you've lost, your, you've lost your saltiness. We are salt and light in this world. We're supposed to show light. We're supposed to show the light of Jesus Christ. We're supposed to preserve this earth with the love that is in our hearts from the Lord. And with all that backbiting and gossiping, I, you know, throughout the years, and I know all of you have heard that from different people and friends, family, whatever. They all say, I don't go to church because. Why? Because what? Hypocrites. hypocrites. They all say that. Because hypocrites. All right? We've lost our saltiness. We're hypocrites because we ourselves have sin in our lives that some people know about, but yet religion causes us to do what? Right. Elevate ourselves above everybody else and profess that what they're doing is wrong. Hypocrites. Pushing people away from, from church. Pushing people away from being saved. Who's that blood on? It's on our hands. All right? Again, Words are the most one of the most powerful things in this earth, and if they're spoken wrongly, you can do harm to people that need Jesus Christ in their life. Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. You guys are Christians. They know it. You guys are Ephraimites. They know it. You're at work. They're looking at you. They're watching you. They're listening to what you say. They're watching what you do, and if you acting just like them, you gossiping just like they are, what difference is it between you and them? Why do I need your God? When you sinning just like I am, you going through it just like I am. You don't know how to handle problems. Got to watch that. Romans 14, 19. Romans 14, 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. What did Bambi say? What they say on Bambi? If you don't have anything good to say about somebody else, keep it closed. Because you're going to not only harm yourself and harm the blessings God wants to bring into your life, you're speaking um, a spiritual assault on somebody else through your words. Okay, You're sowing that judgment, you're sowing that sin into the person that's listening to you. Tell them why such and such is stupid, is wrong, and is out of line. Okay, You don't have any place for that. You, you, we need all the blessings we can get. All right. We all do. We all need the blessings we all we can get. And we don't need to mess that up just because we want to tell somebody else what we think they're doing is wrong. First Corinthians chapter one. Let me see. I need to speed this up, yo. You want me to give a judgment of uh, definition? Yeah, you like to say, you know, it's your opinion. Okay. My yeah. wife says I need to give y'all definitions of judgment and discord. I put gossip on the video just because that's what most people identify with. Um, but like I said before, I've been giving examples this whole time. Judgment, again, is you um, within yourself because that's where it starts. That pride is within you, in your own heart, in your own mind. So that pride raises up and judgment is you already deciding why somebody else or something that somebody else has done is wrong. For whether, whether it be through the word of God as you see it or whether it be through your own eyes and what you believe is right and wrong, that's that judgment. It's done within your heart. Discord is when you profess that pride, that judgment that's in you to someone else. Okay? Or you flip that around and you're listening to somebody sow that judgment to you. So that's why gossip and discord is the same thing. 
judgment is done in your heart and your mind against someone else, and discord is the profession of that. Is you actually speaking the defilement out of your mouth? Is that good enough? All right. First, First Corinthians chapter one, verse ten. Now I, was, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So again, discord divides, okay? So even within the, the, the ministry that we're in, we got to all be on the same page, okay? Outside of that, which is mostly what we're talking about, because if you go to the quarterly and act up, you will be reprimanded. You know, I guarantee you won't do it again. I'm not worried about that. Outside of Cradle of Hope, on your job, you know, at school, on the phone with family members or friends, on Facebook, all right, you have to be aware that, you know, your words cause divisions between people, and that can harm, okay? If, let me see where I am. Hold on. Let me see where I am. Um... Philippians 2. Skip that. Skip that. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, my wife says give you the scriptures. Philippians 2, and that was verses 2 through 8, but I'm not going to read that right now. Y'all can write that down. Philippians 2, 2 through 8. I want y'all to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 22 to 26. 2 Timothy 2. Bear with me. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let me know you're there. Yeah. All right. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender stripes. So again, like we've been saying all along, you know, like I gave that example of asking questions to your fellowship leader after the lesson. Because if you ask foolish or unlearned questions, that can harm somebody else. Now, let me clarify that. You know the whole saying that there are no such thing as stupid questions? Uh, that's a gray area. But the way I want you to look at that is if you ask a question with the wrong heart, that gets into foolish and unlearned. All right? So if we're teaching on a matter like I'm teaching on something here and somebody else got a problem with what I'm saying and you want to profess that to everybody else, you know, that's foolish and unlearned. And that's going to cause what? Strife, like we just read. Verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preadventure will give them repentance to acknowledging of the truth, and they that may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at will. So again, gossip, judgment, discord, strife, arguing, disagreements, pride, that spirit of religion, it's all the same thing. So we have to we have to be aware of those things. Let me give you probably let me see how many I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you about five more scriptures and then I'm gonna close. I'm gonna give you five more scriptures. I think Proverbs 10:12. Write that down. Proverbs 10:12. I do want you to see these. So turn to Proverbs because I'm gonna give you a bunch of scriptures out of Proverbs. I want you to write these down. This is something that I'm going to teach periodically over the next few years because this is something that we all deal with on a daily basis. We'll teach on this. Everybody will be aware. It'll be top of mind. I'm on the phone. Hey, man, that's Judgment Discord. Let's change the subject. Or you're at work. Somebody starts talking that mess. You know, let me go ahead and remove myself. I need to go to the bathroom right quick and just remove yourself. But then after six, eight months later, you you know, you start. we all start getting lax in that area. All, right, all of us, you know, me included. So that's why we need to come back to this. I want you to write these scriptures now so there's stuff that you can read because you don't want to harm yourself and block those blessings from coming to you just because you got something to say about somebody else. Wrote Proverbs 10, 12. It says, hatred stirred up stripes, but love covereth all sins. Love. All right. When we teach on the fruit of the spirit, when we teach on love, we always say that you either love somebody with the love of the Lord or you hate them with the power of darkness. There is no in between. Gossip, judgment, and discord is not love. It's hatred, and we're seeing that right here. It's hatred, it's pride, it's wickedness, it's an abomination. We need to push that down. We've got to slap that flesh. Proverbs 16, 28. Write that one down, please. This is wisdom. Proverbs 16, 28. 
I do want y'all to see these, so I'm giving you a little bit more time to get there. Proverbs 16, 28. You there, babe? Huh? says, A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer spreadeth or separateth chief friends. Okay? So a whisperer, somebody that wants to sow that gossip and that discord among different people. You've all had situations, whether you be in grade school, college, adulthood, whatever, where you talking about somebody else or you listening to somebody else talk about one of your friends, that can cause people to not be friends anymore. And that's what we're saying. We're seeing right here. A whisperer separated chief friends, best friends. That's how powerful words are. That's how powerful discord is. You can be best friends for years and say the wrong thing and people never talk to each other again. Same thing with siblings. Same thing with parents and, and children. All right. Proverbs 23, chapter 20, verse 3. Write that one down. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3. <laughs> I like this one too. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddled. Fools do that. When there's a circle of people at work gossiping about somebody, a fool is going to walk up in there and say, hey, what y'all talking about? That's what a fool would do. Okay? Go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 26. Proverbs 20, 26. I like this one. I'm going to read this one twice. Where no wood is... That ain't 2026? No, 2020. Sorry. 2020. Thank you. I told you I keep me honest on this. I'm going a million miles an hour. Proverbs 2020. You can write down 2026. 20 I know, I know. Huh? What is it? Who so curses his well, I got it messed up. Just listen to what I'm reading. All right. Now I'll, I'll go back on the. I'll go back. No, I'll go back on the video and put the put the scripture on there. But it says, "Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases." Again, I'll put the scripture on video. I'll record. I'll, I'll correct that. My bad. But basically, that's saying. You have to, in order to have a fire, you've got to have wood. You've got to have something that needs to be burned. In order to have strife, in order to have division, in order to have problems and divisions, you've got to have a tail bearer. You've got to have somebody that's working in wickedness and an abomination. You know, some, some butthead has to be going around talking this and that, gossiping, telling everybody what, about what such and such or what you think they're doing is wrong in order for there to be strife. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. Because being that person and then asking God to bless you is just stupidity. Okay? Let me uh, let me see where I want to go. Hold on. Go to Psalms 105, and I'm going to end with these three scriptures. This week, um, when I was thinking about what I was going to do this weekend, you know, this came up. These, these scriptures came up, and I believe they all go together. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's saying, touch not mine anointed. Psalms 105, 15. Psalms chapter 105, verse 15. Mm -hmm. It says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. We've all heard that before. But I want to turn it in a different way to have you look at it from another angle. We all know about the prophets. So, you know, whether, whether or not you believe somebody is a prophet or not, it doesn't matter. This is the reason. God anoints all of us from the foundations of this world to come into this earth and do different things throughout our lifetimes. We know that. We've talked about that to, to, to a great length. You do not know the calling that is in someone else's life. Let me ask this. What does a prophet look like? You're walking in a mall and you just see people passing by. You see a bunch. You go to a men's store or you see, you know, what prophet is. What do they look like? You don't know. So you professing judgment and gossiping about somebody, that person may be a prophet. They may not even know they're a prophet yet, but if God has anointed them in that office and you talking this and that about them, you're pointing out what they're doing is wrong, you're in violation of what God said. Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. Now, in that same, that same scenario, I said we were all anointed from the foundations of the world. You and I, all of us. You don't have to be of the five-fold ministry preacher from the Bema to be anointed. We are anointed to be ministers of righteousness in this earth for the Lord Jesus. So you, again, professing judgment and discord about somebody else, another Christian or whatever, you're in violation of what we just read. God said, don't touch my anointing. Don't do my prophets any harm. 
That we've always focused on the prophets part, not focusing on the fact that we're all anointed in the body of Christ for some purpose. So watch that. Go to Second Corinthians chapter one. And I'll show you that. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty. I gave this example last week. I don't think I put it on video. Did I record last week? No, I didn't. About that, uh, the story when Elisha, which was the apprentice of Elijah, Elisha the prophet, was walking into a city, and uh, these kids, this group of kids came out, and they started judging him, gossiping about him, sowing discord about him, talking bad about him to his face. And he cursed them kids, and two bears came out and tore them all up, killed all 42 of them kids. All right? That shows you, again, that speaking against the anointing of God has dire consequences. Yes, Elisha was a major prophet, but again, like I just read, and I'm about to show you now, it's not, he didn't say just touch not my prophets, he said touch not my anointed. Verse 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which established us with you in Christ has anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given us earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. God has sealed every one of us in the body of Christ. So again, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. Keep your mouth shut about other people because you, you, you can't see it, but that judgment that you're projecting is going to come back on your own head. Okay, last scripture, Matthew chapter 15, I'm going to end with this. Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. You've got to watch that spirit of pride, that spirit of religion, that spirit of I know more than you know. I know what's better for you than you do. You've got to watch that. Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. Before I read this, the scripture says, out of the heart or out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Correct? No, I'm not. that's not what this scripture says. I'm referencing the scripture that everybody knows. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. Now I'm going to read this, Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. Now that which goeth, is, oh, not that which goeth into the mouth that defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. So out of that pride, out of that, that, that sin of judgment and discord that's in you, out of that abundance is what your mouth is going to say. And what your mouth says is going to either bless you or defile you. Okay? You can confess the word of God. All right? That positive confession that we've all been taught when we talk about faith. But the flip side of that is you talking about other people. You gossiping about other people. You're defiling yourself. And you're blocking the blessings from coming into your life. So I'm going to stop there. Um, please read over these scriptures. Please be conscientious throughout the week and moving forward about listening to what other people are saying about other people or you doing it yourself. A good prayer that we all can pray, and I'm going to do this myself, is you ask the Holy Ghost to catch you before you judge or so discord about somebody else. Or, or and alert you when somebody else is judging or so in discord so that you can have the opportunity to remove yourself in that situation. So, again, go forward with that. This is very important. I'll, t I'll talk about this at some later date, and I'll probably reference it throughout other lessons because it's that important. You guys have a great week. And we will see you again next Shabbat.